whatever happened to going out on a high note? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 worst movie endings. Any chance of seeing that old ring of mine again? Please be advised, major spoilers ahead. There's no fixing this one. Number 10, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This is not the Mitchell Hedges skull. Look at the elongated cranium. Kicking off our list is the Indiana Jones film that went away from the spiritual and straight into the sci-fi. While we can stomach a lot, this film nuked the fridge big time when the Crystal Skull awakened a generic alien who proceeded to melt Kate Blanchett's brain. Even worse is the image of Indy witnessing a spaceship flying off not into space, but rather another dimension. Where did they go? Space? Not into space. Into the space between spaces. I don't understand. Welcome to Icarus 2. Number 9. Sunshine. The sun is dying, and the only people that can reignite it are astronauts that hope to do so with a massive nuclear payload. Just remember, it takes eight minutes for light to travel from sun to earth, which means you'll know we've succeeded about eight minutes after we deliver the payload. As if this weren't pressure enough, the first ship to try mysteriously vanished. The air is full of dust. Human skin. What? 80% of all dust is human skin. Now this is a cool setup. Unfortunately, the solitary, cabin feverish tone of the film is completely uprooted in the final act, when the deranged captain of the missing ship reappears and turns the film into a kind of slasher flick. He told me to take us all to heaven. Imagine how confused you'd be if you stepped out to go to the bathroom when that happened. Number 8. The Forgotten A bad movie ending can be the result of any sort of bad decision. This entire film revolves around the fact that everybody thinks that Julianne Moore's kid never existed, even though she believes very strongly that he did. You knew my son, you babysat him a thousand times. Oh honey, I don't know what you're trying to say. Come I'm and... saying that you knew my son, you talked to him, you saw us come and go, you took him to a Mets game and you bought him a hat, and he always wore that hat. God, please just scaring me. With 0% of the film having anything to do with aliens, you can bet that audiences were pretty upset when it was revealed that extraterrestrials were responsible. You need to forget. Seriously, don't. Number seven, Lady in the Water. Most people say, hey, what's wrong with you, Reggie? Why are you only working out on one side of your body? Tell them it's like an experiment. So, the village was bad, but we were willing to give Shyamalan the benefit of the doubt and believe that that was an aberration. Mr. Heap is here. He has a friend. She's beautiful. She's not feeling that well, so she's lying down in my room. Why is she here? However, the struggling director proved that that failure would be his new norm with this incredibly bizarre movie. Though it has a fair amount of interesting characters, the story never really picks up, especially when the entire finale was quite literally about wolves, tree monkeys, and waiting for a nymph to be carried away by a giant eagle, J.R.R. Tolkien style, and we don't even see that. Lame. Number six. The number 23. Of course, things didn't really start here. In this psychological thriller, Jim Carrey's character finds a book entitled The Number 23. It tells the story of a detective who murdered his own girlfriend. With an increasing amount of things in common with the character and the eponymous number seemingly popping up everywhere in his life, his sanity begins to unravel as he pulls at each thread of the mystery. But, as it turns out, he's written the book before giving himself amnesia, of course. Whoever wrote it knows you very well, and only they can give you your answers. You wrote it. <sighs> Number five, I am legend. Great job, Hollywood. Altering your movie's original ending, despite leaving the support for that ending throughout the picture. 
The twist is supposed to be that the Darkstalkers were thinking and compassionate creatures that were merely out to rescue their own kind. Instead, Smith goes out with a bang and his friends find a safe haven to have a happily ever after style ending. Not only does this make for a disappointing end to a disappointing movie, but it completely undermines the message of the source material. Dr. Robert Neville dedicated his life to the discovery of a cure and the restoration of humanity. Number four, War of the Worlds. The Ukraine, a country of some 52 million people, is in almost total blackness tonight in the wake of a series of freakish lightning storms of catastrophic proportion. Okay, so now let's take the same problem in the other direction. Arguably, Steven Spielberg was set up to disappoint from the start by choosing to remain stringently loyal to the original source material. This means that germs defeat the aliens, not humans. So, they've mastered interplanetary travel, but Purell is completely beyond them. From the moment the invaders arrived, breathed our air, ate, and drank, they were doomed. I guess War of the Flu Season or Common Cold of the Worlds weren't catchy titles. Number three, Superman. When Superman failed to save Lois Lane, they decided to cheat instead of showing some Spider-Man style cojones. This involves Superman nonsensically using his super speed to reverse the rotation of the globe and turn back time, because that's how it works. We're pretty sure that that would just kill everything else rather than save the one life. But, you know, what can we expect from a continuity that has to invent a new substance in order to give its hero a weakness? I told you. Number two, Planet of the Apes. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Rebooting a classic and then toying with its twist ending? Now that's bananas. You maniac! Maybe that would've worked had Tim Burton's final scene not went for shock value over logic. Returning Mark Wahlberg to Earth out of nowhere and for no reason, humans have been replaced with monkeys. And even the statue of Abraham Lincoln has been turned into a monument of his defeated monkey foe. Sheesh. This calls for another reboot. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. David thought it was the happiest day of his life. All the problems seemed to have disappeared from his mommy's mind. Number one, the devil inside. Wyatt's South Hartford community was leveled by tragedy as three clergy members were found dead. Taking the top spot is this found footage horror flick centered on demonic possession. Here, signs point to the realization that Isabella isn't quite herself. When the priest realizes that the hospital can't help her, he decides to get her an exorcism. She's waking up. Got much time, Michael. We haven't got much time. However, a scuffle in the car leads to the driver getting possessed and then veering into oncoming traffic. Then everyone's rolling around in the car and it's horrible and bam, movie's over and you're left with a website link? Wow, I hope you pirated this. Not that we condone that. Agree with our list? Which movie ending pissed you off the most? God damn you all to hell! For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.